wow, look at that. I have a night off. I love getting to just chill out and play some Toontown and watch only murders in the building. And who are you? I'm the good witch that lives in the woods behind your house. I live in the city. I have come to ask you a favor. Do you... do you have a name, oh magical good fairy? I am the witch. I just sworn you said fairy. I am the witch, and my name is Magica. That's a DuckTales character. What is your actual name? Sarah. Okay, Sarah. What can I do for I you? I need you to cover Halloween Town High. Yeah, see, it's still August, and I know that, you know, I'm a, I'm a spooky girl and everything, but like, I was kind of hoping that we could wait until- Are you denying to fulfill my request? Well, that's kind of how requests work. Like, there's 3,000 of you guys subscribe. Are you even subscribed to my channel? Are you gonna make the Halloween Town High video? No, not right now. I've got stuff to do. It's my night off. Because you have failed to help me, I will curse you. With... with what? Instead of watching shows from 40 years ago, you will have to cover something topical. That almost never happens. And why is that a that a curse? That'd be good for my analytics. It's something horrible. I mean, I've covered a lot of horrible things. Have you seen Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny? It's something that you've searched for and thought would never see the light of day. Oh no, 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 not Christian Beauty and the Beast. No, come on, I already did the whole Hamilton thing. I don't care. It was an hour and 13 minutes long. That's a bummer. If I do two religious trauma videos back to back, the audience is all gonna unsubscribe. You're not even subscribed. You will sit in this room until you cover this movie. It's a play. And since you deign to call yourself the Nostalgia Queen without even covering Halloween high, you will have to do it in the full regalia of a queen. I don't- I- I'm just gonna change right back out of it as soon as the video's done. Have fun. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, why? With the- with the cape? Why the cape? It's not even supposed to matter how you look, that's the point of the whole story! Well, I'm never one to waste a good hair day, so let's just get right into it and get it over with. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. Gaze upon my obscurity kingdom. <laughs> if you watched my last video, you probably know that I was traumatized by Scamilton the musical. Well, why did I say probably? If you watched the last video, you definitely know it's an hour and 13 minutes long, and I just talk about how much I hate this Christian version of Hamilton that this church did. I promise, this will not be an hour and 13 minutes long. I, I promise, look at, we, I, I promise, because I can't do it again. There's no need to dive back into who this church is or what they do. I did that in the previous video, so if you're interested, go watch at least the beginning part of that. But basically, church in Texas, church makes plays into Christian propaganda pieces, church puts up young actors who don't know any better to doing these terrible plays and then live streams them on the internet and then, you know, they did Hamilton and it went viral and they took everything down off their channel. One of the things that they did a few years ago was Beauty and the Beast, but Christian, and everybody's been looking for it all over the internet and I couldn't find it anywhere. Like, I looked for days, I'd never been able to not find something before and so I thought I was off the hook, but now that I've been cursed with the magical curse, I now have it in my possession, so we're gonna watch it. Obviously, don't bother, harass, anything like that. Don't contact anybody from this church. This is not a, like, hit piece on the church. Definitely do not bother or blame the young people in this show. I haven't seen this yet, unlike when I did Scamilton. God, this is gonna be like- Do you guys remember early on in the channel, I did that- video about that one episode of Bible Man, and I hated it so much. And then right after that, Scott Kramer covered it and was like, hey, when you watch all of them, it's really obvious that the show is anti-Semitic. And I was like, fuck, I knew it was terrible. And then I like didn't talk about anything religious for like another two years because I just hated Bible Man so much. This is gonna be like that. Don't get used to the Christian content. I swear to God, we will go back to talking about anything else after this. I just, I have to know what Christian Beauty and the Beast looks like as somebody with a playlist where I'm hunting down versions of Beauty and the Beast that are obscure. This is about as obscure as it gets. We will have our concessions open all night. That's Bethel's Kitchen. Oh good, they're selling food at this one again. I love when people steal stuff for money. I like that they did the lease. They literally just stole the movie poster and then did some really basic text over here with the name of their production company. You have children with you. If they do start to make a little bit of noise, you know, if you don't mind, I don't know, you guys might want to take them outside or whatever you guys want to do with it. The first movie anyway. I ever went to see in the movie theater, I guess. Well, I was taken to see it. I didn't like go on my own volition. I was like two. It was Tarzan. And apparently I started crying 10 minutes into the movie and my parents took me out of the theater thinking that I was scared because of the, you know, the whole Tarzan's parents dying. Uh, but no, that was not it. I thought the movie was ending because I was a dumb little child apparently. And I was crying because I thought the movie was over. 
That doesn't really have anything to do with anything. I'm just I'm just talking because I'm just scared. <laughs> no, again, I'm really going to try to cover this just as outside of Scamilton, outside everything else. I don't want to just dunk on this church. I almost felt bad about doing two about the same church back to back because I didn't want to come across like I was adding them excessively. But like, not speaking to the children, who again, not their fault. The adults not only stole repeatedly, lied about it repeatedly, but they haven't posted any kind of apology, which is wild to me because I feel like I need to post an apology just for reviewing this and making you guys potentially watch this. They took everything down off their, off their channel instead of like addressing it and owning up to their mistakes. So I think it's fair, even though this is not currently online to talk about this. Oh, camera's moving around. Camera needs to pick a Once pick a spot. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, no, a young prince lived in a shining castle. They stole the actual prelude, voiced by the Cogsworth guy, the guy who was in Dead Zone. What is his name? <laughs> They stole it. They didn't even have, they could have just had somebody do that. There's a whole group of people. I'm sure somebody would have liked to be the person to do that. But then, one winter's night. It's like the coolest intro to a movie ever. Well, one of them, but like that intro I know by heart to the point where when I was an extra on Love, Simon, and I needed to be typing on the computer and they told me, hey, you're really on camera, so make it look as real as you possibly can. I, I was like, I need to have at something to actually type. So I just, even though I couldn't like see what I was typing because it wasn't like registering on the on the on the computer i was just typing from memory the intro to beauty and the beast because i'm cool like that i think i was also typing passages from midsummer night's dream you know as you do an old beggar woman came to the castle and offered him a single rose it's a big rose the prince sneered at the gift and turned the old woman away i've never understood this the prince is like Screw you, you gave me a rose, how dare you? I would love it if somebody showed up and gave me any kind of flower. But he's like, gross, roses. A beautiful enchantress. Oh, we've got a quick change. I'm not gonna lie, I had to turn that back once. I was like, wait, I wasn't expecting the quick change. I probably should have been. She transformed him into a hideous beast, ashamed of his monstrous form. Wait, how did he turn into the beast? I'm never gonna get through this whole thing. I'm fascinated by their quick change ability. Oh, he like goes off stage and puts the mask on. Her quick change was more interesting, but still, you know, here we go. Oh, and he put the little feet on too. He has, the, does he have the little? I thought he was wearing just like pullover like beast feet and that would have been epic. I would have given points. I would have been less angry about the religious propaganda as if he had little beast feet. Okay, so now we have Belle. To this poor provincial town. Good morning, Belle. I just finished the most wonderful story about a boy who slays a giant. Did they change the name of the book for a purpose? I'm, I don't know. Too many questions, not enough time. That's too expensive. I'll borrow this one. That one? But you've read it twice. Well, it's my favorite. Far off places, daring sword mites of my prince in the skies. I've got a cover. I've never actually covered the, the Beauty and the Beast, the, the Disney movie. Do you guys want to see me cover like the actual one? Or is it just like everybody's already seen it, so you don't care? Oh my God, the kids are adorable. Oh, wow. Okay, so now we have Gaston and LeFou. The most beautiful girl in town. I know. And that makes her the best. And don't I just from the from my when the moments in my the moments in my when the moments in saw her. Yeah, so basically, just like in the regular version, all the townspeople sing about how much they hate this girl that's literally doing nothing to them and just trying to be their friend. <laughs> And then they scatter. I used to get like unreasonably, no, it was reasonably angry. I used to get reasonably angry when the, the internet was going through that brief period of like, oh, actually the beauty and the beast is stupid phase. When people would say like, oh, actually Belle is the stuck up one because she's not talking to any of it. It's like, yes, she is. She is so lonely. Look, she's just, she's just begging to like, let somebody know about the book that she's reading. She just wants to like have one friend that isn't her dad or one of those adorable sheep. Gaston, she's coming, she's coming. Hide the way. Here, LeFou, get my gun. Ah, uh, yes, something that every woman wants to hear on a first date. Hello, I brought my gun with me. <laughs> How can you read this? 
There's no pictures. Yeah, where are the pop-ups? <laughs> they don't know what pop-up books were in that period. Maybe, maybe they did. Exactly. I actually don't know when they were invented. Oh, like you. Exactly. Oh, are they using, like, slapstick sounds? What do you say you and me take a trip to the tavern and have a look at my hunting trophy? Can I go? <laughs> Is somebody, like, back there with a switchboard? Also, I could be very wrong, and you can't tell somebody's age by looking at them, but maybe it's just the stature of the two characters, but Gaston comes off as wildly older than Belle. Not that this person looks old, but do you know what I mean? Like, it looks... I, I could be wrong. <laughs> Don't you talk about my father that way! <laughs> Don't talk about her father oh. that way! Maybe they're the same age and she's way younger than she looks, but like, the way that he's like, trying to marry her and stuff, I don't- I don't know. It just makes me wonder. I always wonder about the age differences with these kind of things when you've got potential minors. Oh, darn! How did that happen?! At least it's a Disney movie originally, so they didn't have to like, take out any, uh, swear words like with Hamilton. Do you think I'm odd? What?! My daughter? Odd? Where would you get an idea like that? You got a big laugh out of the audience with that one. Belle, be patient. You're not odd. You have a gift. Instead of the original version where her dad basically just jumps to getting her to marry the worst guy in town. Bless Maurice, but you know, he really did. So you need to remember that when things don't seem to make sense, you can pray and hope that things get better. He takes a detour to tell her about how her faith is important. It's Christian Beauty and the Beast, you know. Hey, how about Gaston? He's a handsome fella. And then he says, you should marry the worst guy in town. It works! It does? Yay, it's working! Also, can we talk about how adorably simplistic the invention is? It's like a rolling cart with a couple of things glued onto it. I don't even mean that as a diss, that's just kind of adorable the way that they committed to the fact that it wasn't gonna look anything like the scale that they needed it to. I should have been there by now! Okay, oh my god, we're in cats! Okay, so the- <laughs> So Maurice is lost in the forest, he's on foot because they could not put a horse on stage, understandable. Get back! And then he just gets chased around by wolf people. He gets chased off stage into the congregation! I would have been terrified! Get away from me! This guy's probably like one of the associate pastors, can you imagine like one of your pastors getting chased around by people in werewolf costumes right in front of you? Help! Okay, he's at the castle. Well, now you've done it. I told you not to let him in. Is anyone home? We've got Lumiere and Cogsworth. We couldn't just leave him for the wolves. Okay, why is the Lumiere character, why is he doing a really good accent? I don't ah! This must be one of those scientific gadgets. That's what this is. Don't yell. That's not Maurice. It's just the, the kindest man. Don't be like, what the hell did you do, you weird clock? Achoo! Oh, you are chilled to the moon, monsieur. Oh my god, look at the flames in Lumiere's hands. Candle hands. Candle hands would be a good name for a band. Jerry's out on that one. I can't, I can't decide right now. Oh, Babette, my love. <laughs> Oh, not only did they keep the relationship between uh, Lumiere and his girlfriend, but they, I think they added lines? Maybe they're just basing it off of the stage play, but again... You're always trying to make me jealous! Well, it's not going to work this time. Maybe cut that if you're gonna have kids. It's not, you know, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm a mom friend. Maybe I'm going overboard, but... There's a stranger here! Oh, now we get full view of the beast. Master, allow me to explain. Who let him in? This cast is really into it. We are not welcome here! I'm sorry, I'll be on my way. Oh, no. He does have the, the beast feet. Okay, I gotta give him a couple points for that. I, I just need a place to stay. Well, I'll give you a place to stay! No! Okay, he throws out- well, he doesn't throw Maurice out, he throws him in the dungeon. He reverse throws him out. You! Ma Maurice! What are you doing in my castle? No, but this- this cast is really, really committed, and they're all, like, really embodying their characters. I gen- genuinely. I- I- Christian Beauty and the Beast is not how I would like to go with this, but, um, I do want to give compliments where I can. Oh no, it looked like the backdrop was gonna fly away for a second. It was moving. <laughs> so all these girls are heartbroken over Gaston. Girls, don't tell me a little thing like that's gonna change your feelings for me. So Gaston goes to propose to Belle. I love that he, instead of like stealing flowers from her front yard, he just stole a whole potted plant and it's gigantic. You, Belle! 
So what do you say? Yes! Or oh, yes! I need to know the age difference before I can figure out oh, if this yes. is funny or not. I don't, I don't know. You probably feel that you don't measure up to me and it's probably true. thanks for asking. Belle, wait! So Belle turns Gaston down. Good for her. Well, you know that Belle always playing hard to get. Gaston thinks he's in like an 80s movie where a girl turns you down and that means maybe later and not just no, leave me alone. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. I have ran up and down every hill I've ever been at uh, in my life, I think, pretending at least once to be Belle. Let me see that. Oh, uh... Lefou, this is my papa's book. Oh, so Lefou comes to her and is, like, writing in her father's journal, and she's like, huh, that belongs to my dad, why the hell do you have it? He's like, I found it in the woods. And she's like, oh shit. So she goes to look for her dad. I'll go find him myself. What's happening? Are we doing a scene transition? Okay, there we go. Yep. Sit in tea. Sit in the master's chair. Pet the pooch! I was only trying to be hospitable. These two are a great Lumiere and Cogsworth. Why did we have to get dragged into this curse? It's not like we threw that poor old beggar woman out on her ear. Yeah, true! No, but are we not responsible too? For helping him become the way that he is? They try to explain it that way in the movie too. And be like, oh, we're all cursed because it's all of our fault that he's the way he is. It's like, no, no, it's his fault if he's being a dick. Sorry, it's a Christian play. I shouldn't swear. Not on the Christian Minecraft server. Mama, guess what I saw? What is it, dear? Oh my god, look at- Look at Chip! Chip is the most adorable Chip! Look, I'm not trying to give them too much credit, but like, I think what we're learning is that even with terrible Beauty and the Beast, and I'm sure it's gonna get real bad in a second, terrible Christian Beauty and the Beast that invokes religious trauma is still Beauty and the Beast, and I still have some fondness for it. Hello? Papa? Okay, so now Belle goes down into the dungeon. Belle? <gasps> Papa! How did you find me? Dad, I was calling you for like a while. You could have answered before then. Then maybe I wouldn't have been cornered by the beast. Oh, I was so, um, I was so anxious to get into it that I forgot to take a thumbnail picture. Say cheese and die. <laughs> Thanks, Chip. Okay, back to the show. Can't you see he's not well? Then he should not have trespassed you. But he's an old man! Don't call your own dad an old man. I mean, Maurice is pretty spry. He's still building contraptions and going to fairs. Take me instead. But you must promise to stay here forever. No! Forever is a lot. Forever? Forever! Forever is a lot. It doesn't need to be forever. Belle, listen no, to me! Please. I'm an old man! Oh, just wait! So <laughs> Belle takes her dad's place. Her dad gets thrown up for real this time. Master. Oh, I thought she was just gonna like let herself into the dungeon and be like, well, I'm gonna lock myself in and I was gonna be like, no, Belle, don't do that. But she didn't. What? Oh god, wow, he's really channeling that beastly anger. I'll show you to your room. But I thought Do you want to stay in the dungeon? No. Then follow me. But yeah, the beast, even though he's a little bit I don't know, hangry maybe. What's in the West of It's forbidden! He's a big softy and he lets Belle stay in like a real room. Who is it? Mrs. Potts, dear. I thought you might like a spot of tea. <gasps> the Mrs. Potts is also doing a very good Mrs. Potts voice. Oh! Careful, dear! Who are you? Madame de la Grande Bouche. Perhaps you've heard of me? The costumes are just spectacular. Well, don't be silly. You heard what the master said. He may be your master, but he's not mine. Was that an allusion to God? She's like, if God locked me in a dungeon, it would be fine. But not when it's the beast. Is that the point? Probably not the point. We're here to see you through. All right, let's play a game while we're having another transition of what's going to give up first, Avery's battery or Avery's sanity? You're right, the sanity's already gone. Who does oh, no. she think she is? Oh. That girl has tangled with the wrong man. Darn right. No one oh. says no to Gaston. The older I get, the more concerned I am by the line, no one says no to Gaston, you know? Looking so down in the dumps. <laughs> oh my god! This version of Gaston is even more violent. No one's slick as Gaston. No one's quick as Gaston. No one acts like a much bigger dick than Gaston. Sorry. No one's like Gaston. 
LaFou. Feel extra bad for him this time. Gaston is the best and the rest is the tips. Good for you, LaFou. <laughs> oh no, LaFou's gonna die. In a wrestling match, nobody fights like Gaston. Bite him? Why? In a spitting match, nobody spits like Gaston. I'm especially good at expectorating. <laughs> On... <sighs> Poor LeFou. Also, you know the word expectorating because of this movie. Don't say that you don't. You didn't know what expectorating was without this. Wow! My what a guy that gets Were they doing like Cotton Eye Joe? Like when you when you do that at a wedding? That's what that reminded me of. Help! Hey! You got her! You gotta help me! Okay, so Maurice comes in looking for help and nobody believes him. I wonder if they act like this for all emergencies. Like if somebody's like, hey, my house is on fire, and they're like, ha, ah, no, it's not. We don't believe in fire. The dangerous pastime I know. I'm watching it on 2x speed so that I don't have to suffer for extra long, and it's hard to sing along. <laughs> When I'm hearing it at 2x speed, but I'm trying to sing it regularly. No, would she? Yes! Now I get it! Let's do it! Let's go! Oh, okay. Yes, I'm endlessly wally resourceful. And as down to the depths he descends. Oh yeah, that's definitely from the stage play. They kept in the extra lines. What if you're like a kid that's only seen the movie a million times, and you're like, I got this, and then you realize that there's extra stuff that you don't know about? You'd be like... Damn. Well, Christian Micah. You'd be like, gosh darn it, that's annoying. I would have been. Back when I was in the church, I never would have said damn. One day you're saying mild curse words and the next you're pirating online. I don't know, it's a slippery slope. What's taking so long? So the beast is nervous for his... I was gonna say first date, but Belle is still fearing for her life. I wouldn't call that a date. Then when she comes in, give her a dashing debonair smile. Come, come, show me the smile. Good. Say cheese and- <laughs> So Cogsworth comes down and is like, So... The girl hates you. Well, circumstances being what they are, she's... Not coming. What?! Because you're holding her here against her will. She doesn't want to come down. I'm not hungry. You're hungry if I say you're hungry. You're hungry if I say you're hungry. That's not how that works. You can't go around ordering people to be hungry. It doesn't work like that. Mm. That's what I said, Belle. If you don't come down to dinner, you don't eat at all! Oh, uh, master. <laughs> Aw, that baby sounded sad. Back when I was a kid in church, apparently, I don't remember doing this, but my mom tells the story. We were sitting in church and the pastor did one of those pastory things where he was like telling a story and he's like and do you know what and apparently me i was like what finish your sentence even back then i didn't like dead space being left in there it's no use she'll never see me as anything but a monster Again, I know it's gonna get really, really bad when the extra Christian-y stuff comes in, but like, this is going better than, than Hamilton was. I'll give them that. Soup du jour, hot devs why we only live to serve. Try the gray stuff, it's delicious. What the hell was the gray stuff? I've wondered this many a night, laying awake, being like, what the hell was the gray stuff? Come on and lift your men, you take a glass and then you'll be our guest. So they've also obviously lived lifted the backing tracks for the songs like they did with Hamilton. But also like, look at how the plates are exactly the same. They could have given the plates their own design. Life is so unnerving for a servant who's not serving. But yeah, you guys are really stealing the stuff. I'm I'm worried that I'm gonna get demonetized. I'm gonna have to like cut around to make sure that Disney doesn't freak. Oh bravo, that was wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. Just like in all the other versions, they're like, hey, Belle, you want to eat? And then they're like, hey, we're going to sing a song instead. And then they don't eat. Like, I guess it's implied that she ate, but like, I'm always like, did she actually get to eat in the time it took them to sing that one song? They have fairy lights. They turned on the fairy lights. They couldn't have had somebody turn them on for her. Like, she had to turn on the fairy lights. Do you realize what you could have done? Get out! Okay, so now Belle runs away. But yeah, I definitely want to cover the actual Disney Beauty and the Beast and maybe like one of the stage plays. I actually found it's in my future videos like where I save all the things that get sent to me on here on YouTube so that I can cover them. Restored 1993 recording from the stage play at the parks. Maybe one day we'll do a video on that. Oh, the 
swear people are back. Yoink! Stage fighting, nice. I like that he's holding his arm, even though I don't think anybody, none of the where people got his arm. Oh, beast. Get up. You have to help me, get up. Yeah, how'd she carry him all the way back there? In the movie, she just, it just cuts to him back up on the horse and she's walking the horse back. How'd she get his big ass up there? Not to body shame the beast, but he's like three or four times bigger than Belle. It's just, I wonder how she did that. Oh, that hurts. She cleaning his wound with water from a paint bucket? That seems non-sanitary. Well, if you hadn't scared me, I wouldn't have run away. I had a Beauty and the Beast dolls, and the Beast had, like, a really terrifying mask that would then... You would, like, yeet it off, and it would be like, hey, he's a dude again. Poor Beast. Can Belle break the evil spell? Only her magical kiss can change Beast to a handsome prince like this. Thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. That's literally a paint bucket. Oh, Papa. How I wish you were with me right now. You always taught me to have hope. And pray. Okay, so now we get to more Christian-y stuff. Uh, this is a deviation. She's praying. Jesus, I know there's good in the beast. Help me to see the good in him. Just as you see the good in me. He's like, God, help me not to lose my shit and kill this man. There's something sweet and almost kind. Oh, now we go into something there. I love something there. Oh, I just realized that Mrs. Potts has a little... Uh, she's like a one golden arm, like a C-3PO situation. Nice. And when we touched, she didn't shudder at my paw. No, it can't be. Come on, Beast. You're a snack and a half. I've never felt this way about anyone. I want to do something for her. You could tell her not right in front of her. Sorry. Stage logic, I know. You must close your eyes. It's a surprise. Oh, the library. I love when he gives her the library. It used to be my favorite. All right, now! Why couldn't they just get... Ooh, microphone. Microphone did a microphone thing. Why couldn't they just get- I get all the other stuff, not being able to have real props. Why couldn't they just get, like, an actual shelf of books? I know from going to big mega churches my entire childhood that every mega church, probably every church period, but especially, like, churches that have, like, a ton of people, there's just, like, whole cabinets just full of lost Bibles that no one ever comes back to get. You could have just, like, had it be a little meta-Christian thing. They could all have been Bibles, you know? I'm sure you could have found some real books and a shelf to put them on. Have you really read all these books before? Oh, not all of them. Some of them are in Greek. Show off. There may be something there that wasn't there before. Have you read this one? Oh yes, it's a wonderful book. Have you read this one? Oh yes, it's one of my favorites. Really? Wow. Chemistry? Would I ever be a boy again? Did he say I have to be a boy again? Oh, Poor Chip. In every version, Chip is a child who gets turned into a teacup. Even if all the adults deserve to be animated inanimate objects. Why does the little child have to be responsible? That's screwed up. There's no one than this. Than to lay down one's life for his friend. Oh, is she reading? She's reading the Bible. You've read the Bible before? Oh, that old book. I forgot what kind of play we were we were watching and I was like, what kind of story? Oh, it's the Bible. Some messed up stuff in the Bible. I remember I had these little, and I know other people who were raised Christian definitely had these, a collection of like little illustrated Bible story, like storybooks. Like this is what was like read to us at, you know, before bed. And we had like a whole collection of them. And for some reason, the story of Samson and Delilah was one that they decided to put in the story collection for children. Um, and they even like illustrated, if I'm remembering this correctly, I have to be remembering this correctly. There's a, they illustrated like Samson without his eyes. He gets, he gets liberated of his, his eyes. And that was in the book. And I remember having nightmares for like weeks about it. Like, I don't know why some people think that reading Bible stories to their kids is a good idea. I love my dad. He thought it was a great idea. And it's just like, oh my God, just read Goldilocks, please. What other story do you know of an innocent prince who chose to become like everyone else only to be hated and killed to free his people? So she tells him about Jesus. But do you really believe that someone would sacrifice their life for a beast. And he's like not really into it, like Hamilton was. Belle, 
I've really enjoyed spending time with you. Oh, well, this has all been an adventure for me. But he's like warming up to her, so that's cool. I've just had an idea. Why don't you join me in the ballroom tonight and I'll show you. I would love to. I'm glad that they can make it work despite their difference in religion. I mean, he's also a giant beast boy, so there might be more complicated challenges with their really I don't yeah. The beast does PETA hate Beauty and the Beast? I just thought about this. You know how PETA hates, like, you know, Animal Crossing, fishing, and, like, all kinds of ridiculous stuff? Do they hate Beauty and the Beast? Because I know he's, like, he's not, he's a, he's a dude, but he's, like, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? But I desperately needed a drink. Chug, chug, chug. Did they just make a drinking Wait, reference out of nowhere? How does the Christian play know how to do the chug, like chug, a... chug thing? I... Actually, I can answer that. Yeah, I was a church kid. We knew what drinking was. But she's gonna need a little bit more persuasion. Yeah, turn them down flat. <laughs> oh. I'd really like if he stopped threatening LeFou. In every version, but especially this version. You want me to throw her father in the asylum unless she agrees to marry you? Yikes. Oh my god, we're hearing the little prelude to Evermore. Wow. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I've had fairy lights like that. I'm a basic white girl. You can put them on a bunch of different settings, and then you can cycle them through all the settings. And it looks like nobody bothered to pick a setting, so now they're just cycling through all the different settings, and it's not really giving off the effect that it's probably supposed to. I think it's supposed to be like a glowing effect, but it's just like, it's pretty, it's glowing, and now we're at a rave. I'm not sure I can do this. Look, that might help bolster up your courage. All right, so we've got Lumiere and Cogsworth wingmanning for the beast. You need to turn up Mrs. Potts's mic a little bit. I can't hear her. Bless him. She's having a dance in that big dress. He's got the, the beast feet, as we've already established. Oh, the beast looks extra terrifying when all the lights go off. The light was, like, reflecting off of his face in just the wrong way, and I was like, oh, God. If only I could see my father again. With this mirror, you can see anything you want to see. Okay, so he gives her the magic mirror to see her dad. He's in trouble! What are they doing to him? Why did I think that it was gonna be a screen and we were actually gonna see Papa? That would- that would have been too ambitious. I release you. So he lets her go because he's learned what love and empathy is. Good for him. I don't know why I said that sarcastically. I think that's just the tone of my voice now. I must say everything is going just peachy. I knew you had it in you. I... I let her go. <laughs> yes, but... Wait. I love this in every version where where Cogsworth is like, w you let the prisoner go? How, how could you do that? You stopped committing a crime? I mean, I, he's, he's the, he is the law, but, you know. I was the one who had it all. I was the master of my fate. As far as songs that are originated from the stage play and not the movie itself, this is my favorite song. Evermore is my favorite. And be with me forevermore. It's useless. Oh, they cut off half of Evermore. But maybe Belle was right. Yes, she must be right. That scripture she mentioned. Oh, God. Yeah, they cut it off for the Bible verse. About Jesus sacrificing his life for another. I thought it was all a fairy tale. The lesson isn't Belle is a badass and peak girlfriend material. The lesson is God, it's a church. Jesus, I understand it now. You also sacrificed your life. You were able to look past my sin. So the beast prays and accepts Jesus. I know I don't deserve one, but I need a second chance. Is this what's gonna break his curse right here and now? Is it just like poof? Forgive the monster that I am. No, because he was still cursed that he had to fall in love. It would have been, I, I'm kind of surprised they didn't just say like he was cursed to truly accept Jesus and then he would be human. But then I guess there's no need for Belle, so like whatever. In that version, Belle doesn't get, you know, held. She just comes to the door like, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And then the movie ends. They tell me I can't find her. I'll find her by myself if I have to. Whoa, what did the plant do to you, dude? He let me go. That, that horrible beast? But he's different now. 
I hate to be this person, but I'm here to be this person right now. He did the right thing before he accepted God, so like, he had already changed. Like, if the point of the story is that God saved his soul, it's kind of falling apart, you know what I mean? We've come to collect your father. My father? Okay, and so now the mob yeah. comes to take Maurice off to an insane asylum. It's a shame about your father. My father's not crazy, Gaston. I like how the lantern is color coordinated with his cuffs. That's nice. Show me the beast. Oh. And now the Bob knows about the beast and everybody gets riled up because Gaston's an ass. Oh, I can't hear anybody in the mob except for Gaston. So it's time to take some action, boys. Why did they give them this lack of choreography? They're moving around like NPCs in Mario Kart. I have to go back and warn him. Here we go! No! What just got yeeted? Something just got yeeted and it almost hit Bell. Ah! They could have given them actual dance moves, guys. Come on. They're out here giving their all. You could give them a couple of real moves. Grab your guns, grab your knives, save your children and your wife. We'll save our village and our lives. This version of the mob is gender diverse. Maybe that's just because they didn't have enough male people to be in the mob, but I'm pretty sure in the movie, the mob is all just the men. Because all those female presenting people just said, save our children and our wives, implying that they support gay marriage, which is definitely not what this church supports, as uh, covered very, very much in the last video. <laughs> like the sneaky cabinet. Oh my god. What's the matter, beast? Too kind and gentle to fight back. <laughs> Sorry, the cartoonish sound effects. <laughs> it's not supposed to be funny, but it just sounds like a video game. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, he shredded the beast! Ooh. That was so much more violent than it needed to be. At least, at least I got to see you one last time. I thought he was gonna say at least I accept Jesus. I know the true love of Jesus Christ. Oh my god, he said it. Oh no. Jesus, please give Beast a second chance. She prays. I love you. And then she says she loves him. I think it's time we go. But I can't leave him here. Introducing an existence of the Christian God in this universe is weird, right? God would have just let the beast die if the spell hadn't been broken, even though he was a good person. Because he needed Belle. Belle, please. Her dad's like, come on, Belle. Stop having feelings and empathy. I was hoping Jesus would give him a second chance. <laughs> It's a miracle! Like Lazarus! Beast? Well. That would have been a pretty cool play. Especially if they let Lazarus be like a zombie dude. Sorry. Lumiere! You did it! We're human again! I knew you could do it! Cogsworth! I knew it all along. Hey, the Beast is a regular dude again. They're all regular people. Good for them. This whole time, my sins have brought a curse upon this entire castle. Okay, so now we get another Bible lesson. Jesus Christ broke the curse. But Bell broke the curse. Bell broke the curse. Because if not, then you would have changed back right when you accepted Jesus. Bell broke the curse. Jesus, Jesus isn't concerned that you have a girlfriend, Beast. Oh, thank glory be to Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Does anybody remember the episode of Monk where he joins a cult and they're all like, praise be? That's what it reminded me of. Now, the only medication I've been taking is four milligrams of the light! Yeah. That's just- I'm sorry, that's just how my brain works. And this cast, unlike the other cast, at least gets to have like a, at least somewhat of a curtain call. There's a saying that says, God loves a sinner but hates the sin. By the way, that's also a really backhanded thing to say because like it gets used, at least the way that it gets used now, it's used as like, I'm not bigoted against you, I just hate your sin. It like gives people an out when it's like, no, no, you're just still being an asshole sometimes. Like I fully understand the point, but I just, 
I just kind of like shrivel up a little bit every single time I hear somebody say that. This was a much less egregious play, to be honest, than the Scamilton play. But this goes back to the same thing. It's like, you can't just steal a story that's about something else and then make it about something completely different. Like, interpreting it is one thing, but this Beauty and the Beast is so important because it's about seeing people for the good in them, not the way that society sees them. But when I watched the live action Beauty and the Beast movie, I remember being so upset because they did that thing that I think, I don't know if it originates from the plays or not, but the play ends with all of the townspeople all also getting a happy ending, and I don't like that because to me, Beauty and the Beast is in part about how, at least Disney's version is in part about you know, like mob rule and how just because the masses feel a certain way doesn't mean that that is always correct. Gaston is so loved just because he fits the gender norms and the conformity of the town that he lives in. Belle is not loved even though she's a much better person because she does not. Like Beauty and the Beast is a story about radical love and that's something that's so important. The changes are not quite, quite as offensive and I mean they're in your face but they're not. Maybe Hamilton just broke me. Maybe Scamilton melted my brain and I'm just doing that thing where you know, I've covered so much weird stuff on this channel that I just, I just don't have a, a barometer to, to sense the weirdness anymore. It's weird, don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know. It's not quite as bad as Hamilton, but like, it's still annoying because it's like, that's just not what Beauty and the Beast is about. There's plenty of stories in the Bible. Like somebody said in my comments, like they could have just done a Bible story instead of stealing intellectual property. It's like, yeah, yeah. And then it, the story would be about the thing that you're trying to teach about. I don't know. I wanted to cover this because in my search to cover all things Beauty and the Beast, uh, this one is probably the most obscure um, that I know of because they tried to yoink it away, but thanks to YouTube magic, here we are. So wait a minute, I didn't want to cover this. I was trapped here by a woodland witch. Did I do it? Did I break the spell? Can I go now? Why can't I? Go? Oh, it's because I didn't do the, I didn't do the outro. Fuck. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. Uh, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Did I do it? Did I break the curse? Oh my god. Fuck! I need to go to bed.